B. Be provided with the staves, arms, ammunition, and other equipment necessary for the effective discharge of his duties. Unquote. Furthermore, Section 6 of the Police Act provides that, I quote, subsection 1, subject to this Act, the Commissioner may make standing orders and give administrative directions to be observed by police officers in the performance of their duties. Subsection 2, every police officer shall obey all lawful orders given verbally or in writing and shall comply with standing orders and administrative directions issued by the Commissioner. Unquote. Accordingly, I am informed by the Commissioner of Police that pursuant to Section 6 of the Police Act and to enforce Section 7 of the same Act, the Police has issued Police Standing Order Number 110, Dress Regulations, which fully describes the design and pattern for each uniform with accessories. The said Police Standing Order specifically includes that Police officers will be dressed in uniform when on duty, except for those who are authorized to perform duty in civilian dress. And only articles of uniform of the regulation pattern are to be worn when on duty. I am further informed that the police force has a strength of around 13,000 police officers posted in various branches units. It is noted that some units have their specific uniform requirements. For example, the National Coast Guard, the Special Support Unit, the, and the Special Mobile Force. Mr. Speaker, sir, I am also informed that all police officers on joining the force for the six-month foundation training are issued with the regular working police uniform, that is, the blue uniform, including all the necessary accessories, irrespective of their subsequent posting, which comprises two shirts, short sleeves, one shirt, long sleeves, one cardigan, one raincoat, three pairs of shoulder badges, two pairs of trousers, one leather belt with buckle, one pair of metal shoulder badge, two embroidered name plates, one cap with badge, one lanyard, three pairs of socks, and two pairs of shoes. As regards female police officers, over and above the normal entitlement mentioned earlier, they are also issued with two skirts, one pair of pantyhose, and one pair of ballerina shoes. On completion of their foundation training, police officers are posted to various units within the police force. Police divisions, units such as the regular police, special mobile force, the National Coast Guard, the special support unit, and the police helicopter squadron have their respective uniforms and accordingly all police officers are issued their full set of those specific uniforms along with their accessories in every financial year as follows. For the regular force, that is the regular police, those wearing the blue uniform, they are issued four shirts, short sleeves, two shirts, long sleeves, four pairs of trousers, two pairs of shoes, and three pairs of socks. For those posted at the special mobile force, they are issued one shirt, short sleeves, olive green, one shirt, short sleeve, dark green, one pair of trousers, olive green, one pair of trousers, dark green, three pairs of socks, and one pair of, of shoes. They are also issued one set of combat dress, 
comprising one shirt long sleeve, one pair of trousers, and one pair of combat boots. For those posted at the special support unit, they are issued four shirts, short sleeves, light blue, four pairs of trousers, dark blue, three pairs of socks, two pairs of shoes, and one pair of combat boots. And police officers posted at the National Coast Guard are issued four shirts, short sleeves, white, two pairs of trousers, navy blue, two pairs of shoes, and three pairs of socks. And for those police officers posted at the police helicopter squadron, they are issued two shirts, short sleeves, white, one shirt, long sleeve, white, two pairs of trousers, blue-gray, three pairs of socks, and two pairs of shoes. It is to be noted that in every financial year, police officers posted in the Special Mobile Force, the National Coast Guard, the Special Support Unit, and the Police Helicopter Squadron, other than the regular police, are also issued one set of the normal blue uniform comprising one shirt short sleeves, one shirt long sleeves, one pair of trousers, one pair of shoes, and one pair of socks. As regards police officers working in civilian dress in other units of the police, such as the CCID and the ADSU, amongst others, they are also issued one set of the blue uniform together with the required accessories and are paid a monthly clothing allowance of 505 rupees. Additionally, police officers are issued with other accessories such as caps, belt, embroidered nameplate, cap badge, and lanyard as and when required or in view of wear and tear. Moreover, police officers are provided with other ceremonial and specialized dresses depending on their posting and nature of duties. Mr. Speaker, sir, with a view to ensuring timely issue of uniform to police officers, a constant monitoring is carried out by the manager, procurement, and supply in the warehousing section of the police department. As such, during every financial year, a request for purchase is made by the officer in charge of the uniform unit at the warehousing section. The procurement process for acquisition of uniforms involved. In the first instance, the Committee of Needs undertakes an assessment of the total requirement of the police force. Subsequently, based on availability of funds, the Committee of Needs makes recommendation for approval by the Commissioner of Police for procurement, preparation of the annual procurement plan and its subsequent publishing on the website of the Public Procurement Office and of the Mauritius Police Force, then there's preparation and vetting of the tender documents, the launching of, of tenders, the closing and opening of tenders, the setting up of a bid evaluation committee to evaluate the bids and samples, the departmental bid committee reviews uh, the bid evaluation report and subsequently recommends for approval by the accounting officer, and notification to successful and unsuccessful bidders, and then finally awarding of contract upon, of course, no challenge by unsuccessful bidders. On receipt of the uniform from the successful supplier, random samples of same are sent by the police to a recognized body for testing of the product to verify whether the supplied items are in conformity with the required specifications of the tender. 
Upon clearance from the recognized body, the manager, procurement and supply of the warehousing section of the police department proceeds with the issue of police uniforms in accordance with schedule plan. If the sample of uniform does not obtain clearance from the recognized body, the supplier is given the opportunity to resubmit amended uniform items. In case the sample is still non-compliant, the contract is cancelled and the offer is made to the next responsive bidder. In the event there is no other responsive bidder, a fresh tender exercise is carried out. Mr. Speaker, sir, a buffer stock of police uniform is always kept in the warehouse for issue to police officers whose uniform have been damaged in the performance of their duties or wear and tear amongst others. The different items of the uniform are distributed to the police officers in varied frequencies, namely short sleeve shirts, long sleeve shirts, shoulder badges, trousers, skirts, socks and shoes once yearly, leather belt, belt buckle, metal shoulder badge, embroidered nameplate, cap badge and lanyard once at the time of recruitment but renewed in case of wear and tear, and caps once every three years or in case of wear and tear. Mr. Speaker, sir, I am also informed that over the last few years, the uniform of the police has known several changes from fabrics that were not comfortable or conducive to harsh weather and other conditions to lightweight. The cloth materials have also been subject to changes aimed at providing better protection and more ease of movement to the police officers. The older grey khaki uniforms were found not suitable for a tropical island like ours and was portrayed as unfriendly towards the community. Subsequently, several academic and technical discussions were held regarding the fabrics, style and color of the uniform, taking into account the individual message each design conveys. Mr. Speaker, sir, in 2021, the police decided to bring certain changes to the uniform to stand out from jobs requiring the wearing of similar blue uniform, such as security companies. In this breath, a new police outfit was designed and approved. The style has remained almost the same, but some changes were brought to the fabric and color, coupled with some other distinctive features, which include an embroidered badge, the triangular pockets on the shirt, a gray line, on the seams of the pants and skirts, and the silver metal badge of the Mauritius Police Force placed on the shoulder trap, amongst others. Thus, on 9th of October 2021, the new police uniform came into force as regulated by GN 1497 of 2021. Accordingly, the Police Standing Orders No. 110, Dress Regulations, was amended to direct all police officers to wear the new uniform as from 11th of October 2021. Mr. Speaker, sir, I am informed by the Commissioner of Police that the last issue of police uniform was carried out from September 2023 to April 2024 whereby every police officer of the regular police was issued with three pairs of trousers, three pairs of socks, two pairs of shoes, three shirt short sleeves, and one shirt long sleeves. The remaining one shirt short sleeve, one shirt long sleeve, and one pair of trousers will be issued by September 2024. 
to comply with the established policy to issue four sets of police uniform to those officers. On the other hand, the police officers of the other units have been issued their full set of their specific uniform along with their one set of blue uniform. As regards the next issue of police uniform for year 2024-2025, it is expected to be effected by February 2025. A stock taking exercise has been carried out by the warehousing section to identify those items requiring purchase. In that respect, Tenders were launched for the procurement of ready-made trousers on 5th of April 2024 and another one was launched on 17th of April 2024 for shirts inclusive of police badge. However, both tenders were unsuccessful as none of the tenders were responsive. The tender unit of the police department is initiating action for a fresh tender exercise. Mr. Speaker, sir, I'm informed by the Commissioner of Police that to ensure that all the police officers Officers have the best possible attire to conduct their duty at the level of the police headquarters. The committee may co-opt experts and professionals from relevant government institutions to advise on the effective discharge of their duties. In fact, the committee looks into the specifications of police uniforms, including the quality, design, material composition, and also to consider any amendment thereto. This committee also caters for inter alia, the standardization of materials and also addressing complaints made by members of the police force. Thank you. Honorable Buddha. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. So, the uniform being the symbol of authority, may I ask the Honorable Prime Minister whether he is aware that some companies and security services are in fact using the same type of fabric and the same colors, and is it not high time that the outfit and the design of the police regular uniform be modified so that we have this symbol of authority? Well, I have just answered, Mr. Speaker, sir, that uh, there is a committee that has been looking into the uh, design material and other specific matters concern, concerning the uniform and precisely because previously there were other uh, private companies that were using the type of uh, uniform that there has been a change in the design and in the material and so on. Now, if the Honourable Member is alleging now that there are companies that are using the same type of uniform, the same uh, design and so on. Maybe you can uh, communicate to this house, let us know, and then I will definitely ask the Commissioner of Police to look into it. Yes, I know. I, I mean, if the Honourable Member is here, yes, he should communicate to us which uh, company is using the same uniform. Yes. Uh, I will certainly communicate with the Prime Minister. No, but tell the house. Yes. Tell us. But, but the, CNG, uh, the population is watching you now. <laughs> yes, so the, oh, the, please let, let the minister, let the honorable Buddha ask his question. Yes. The CNT and some security services CNT? are using almost the same design, Mr. Speaker. Sir. Okay. Now, may, may, I, may I ask the honorable Prime Minister what is the budget involved and whether he is aware? I can't, I can't hear your question. May I ask the Honourable Prime Minister whether he is aware, what is the budget for this item? And the second thing is whether he is aware that the winter gear has not yet been given to the police officers so far for this year. Well, I, there are two questions in one. Huh? Yes. The budget, Mr. Speaker, sir, I've just mentioned. That's why I gave a detailed answer so that the Honourable Member would listen because the budget varies from year to year. There is no same amount that is being spent every year. 
It is according to the requirements of the police when they do their stock taking, when they do also uh, come up with how many items they would require. Then there is also, uh, of course, uh, a, a discussion with the Ministry of uh, Finance so that we agree on the allocation of the amount that is going to be spent for this particular item. So, the, as I say, the budget is not the same like every year. Now, there was another question. Yes. They haven't yeah. been allocated winter well, gear. I, I have answered. The, all the uniforms are provided uh, according to what is prescribed. Now, the last tender, uh, well, the last tender has been unfortunate. There has been uh, unresponsive. But that doesn't mean that we don't have uh, enough of the uniforms to provide to the officers. So the tender is going to be, I, I have been informed that they are going to relaunch the exercise. And uh, of course, in due course, we will see what is going to be the, the outcome. Okay. Last question, Honorable Amir. Yes, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Can I ask the Honorable Minister, uh, Prime Minister, sorry, uh, what is the total cost? What was rather the total cost of the procurement exercise of the last uniform that was procured? Not the last tender, but the last procurement exercise. And also, what is the name of the company who won the contract? Well, I let me, maybe my, my officer will give me uh, the last. Uh, Exercise a okay. So for shirts, short sleeves, the date uh, when it was procured 24th of January 2023, 49,000 units at the an amount of 16 million 114 thousand. Rupees. Now I don't have the name of the. Maybe in the meantime, while I answer the other, but uh, shirts, long sleeves. Uh, again, on the twenty fourth of uh, January two thousand twenty three was procured thirty two thousand five hundred units at a cost of eleven million and twelve thousand rupees. Uh, so which one is it? So the company is New Bombay Limited. I guess for for both. <coughs> New Bombay Limited. Okay. Next question, Honorable David. B six twenty. Mr. Speaker, sir, a ballot paper is the instrument by which a voter exercises his right to vote for the candidates of his choice in an election. Section 1.3 of the first schedule to the Constitution of Mauritius provides that, I quote, every vote cast by an elector at any election shall be given by means of a ballot which, except in so far as may be otherwise prescribed, in relation to the casting of votes by electors who are incapacitated by blindness or other physical cause, or unable to read or understand any symbols on the ballot paper, shall be taken so as not to disclose how any vote is cast, and no vote cast by any elector at any general election shall be counted unless he cast valid votes for free candidates in the constituency in which he is registered or in the case of an elector registered in Rodrigues for two candidates in that constituency. Unquote. Both the design and form of a ballot paper are prescribed in Regulation 21 
of the National Assembly Elections Regulations 2014, which provide that, I quote, subsection 1, in the case of a poll at an election, the votes shall be given by a ballot, subsection 2a, the ballot of each elector shall consist of a ballot paper showing the full name and description of each candidate, the symbol of identification allotted to each candidate, and in the case of a general election, the party or party alliance, if any, to which he belongs, and B, each ballot paper shall, subsection 1, be in the form 6, or where the electoral commissioner is of opinion that, in view of the number of candidates, it is impracticable to make use of form 6 in form 6A, to have a number printed on its verso, and free, have attached to it a counterfoil with the same number printed on its rector. Unquote. There are two types of ballot papers, namely ordinary ones and tendered ones. With regard to tendered ballot papers, Regulation 31.1a, National Assembly Elections Regulations 2014, provides that, and I quote, where a person representing himself to be an elector whose name is on the register applies for a ballot paper after another person has already voted as that elector, the person shall, after satisfactorily answering the questions referred to in Regulation 29.1, be entitled to mark a tendered ballot paper which is of a different color in the same manner as any other elector. Unquote. I wish to highlight that the Office of the Electoral Commissioner has confirmed that the preparation and printing of ballot papers pursuant to the provisions of the National Assembly Election Regulations have always been strictly adhered to for all elections. Mr. Speaker, sir, with regard to Part A of the question, I am informed by the Office of the Electoral Commissioner that given that Regulation 14.1 of the National Assembly Elections Regulations 2014 provides that a candidate may not more than three days after nomination day, withdraw his candidature. The list of candidates for each constituency is finalized after the deadline for withdrawal of candidates. It is only then that the printing of ballot papers can begin, and this process must be completed at least three days before polling, polling day. For instance, in 2019, National Assembly elections, which were held within the minimum time frame, provided for in the Representation of the People Act, this exercise had to be completed within 10 days. Section 41.2 of the Representation of the People Act provides that, I quote, the day of election appointed under subsection 1b shall be not less than 15 days, no more than 30 days after the day on which the writ is issued and the day on which a poll is to be taken shall be not less than 15, no more than 60 days after the day on which the nomination of candidates for the election is received. Unquote. Therefore, if the interval between the nomination day and the polling day is longer. The period within which the ballot papers have to be printed would be longer. Mr. Speaker, sir, with regard to part B of the question, the Office of the Electoral Commissioner has informed in categorical terms that the printing of ballot papers is exclusively carried out at the Government Printing Department under strict police surveillance on a 24-hour basis. This has invariably been the case for all elections since before independence. Furthermore, 
This exercise is carried out under the supervision of the Office of the Electoral Commissioner and the Electoral Supervisory Commission. This ensures the integrity and security of the ballot papers throughout the printing process. I am, in, I am further informed that ballot papers are printed in booklets containing either 100, 50, or 25 ballot papers, while tendered ballot papers are made up in booklets of 5 or 10 in a different color. For the 2019 National Assembly elections, ordinary ballot papers were printed in booklets of 100 and booklets of 25, while standard ballot papers were printed in booklets of 5. The quantity of ordinary and tendered ballot papers printed for each constituency, polling station, and voting room is meticulously determined to a detailed process. The exact number needed is carefully calculated to ensure that there is a sufficient number of ballot papers for the electoral process. Once the number of ballot papers is determined, the required number of ballot papers is then transcribed and noted in a document called the distribution of ballot papers. This document serves as an official record ensuring transparency and accountability in the distribution of ballot papers. Mr. Speaker, sir, the Office of the Electoral Commissioner has again highlighted that, as has always been the practice, ballot papers are printed at the government printing department and nowhere else, and will continue to be printed thereat under the supervision of the government printer, the Office of the Electoral Commissioner, and the Electoral Supervisory Commission. Ballot papers have never been printed outside the government printing department. There has also never been any outsourcing of the printing of ballot papers to private printers, as was falsely alleged by some after the 2019 National Assembly elections. And in the electoral petition lodged by Dr. Navin Chandra Rambulam on 28th of November 2019, where he alleged that ballot papers were printed at the premises of quad printing at Coromandel. What a shame. I am informed that as soon as the writ of election is issued, meetings are held with the government printer and the police department with respect to security measures, the printing and transportation of the ballot papers to the office of the electoral commissioner. After the ballot papers are printed, they are handed over to the officer in charge of the office of the electoral commissioner and conveyed to the office of the electoral commissioner under armed police escort. At the office of the electoral commissioner, the ballot papers are verified and sealed in black stationary boxes and kept under lock and key and guarded on a 24-hour basis by officers of the Special Supporting Unit. In accordance with a pre-established itinerary, two days prior to the polling day, the sealed black stationary boxes are then conveyed under armed police escort to police stations in the respective constituencies under the supervision of the returning officers. The sealed black stationary boxes are then placed in a strong room for safe custody and the doors are sealed by the returning officer. The returning officer will take over the sealed black stationary boxes in the early morning of the polling day to be handed over to respective senior presiding officers. The senior presiding officers will then transport the sealed black stationary boxes to their respective polling stations under armed police escort. Regulation 28.1 of the National Assembly Election Regulations 2014 provides that, I quote, 
every ballot paper shall bear an official mark which shall be embossed or perforated and a printer's design. Unquote. Before a ballot paper is delivered to a voter, it shall bear an official mark which shall be embossed or perforated by the presiding officer at the bottom next to the printer's design. The official mark is kept secret and is different for each constituency and an interval of not less than five years shall intervene between the use of the same official mark at elections for the same constituency in line with Regulation 28.1 and 2 of the National Assembly Elections Regulations 2014. Mr. Speaker, sir, as regards to Part C of the question, the Office of the Electoral Commissioner has informed that, as has always been the case, including for the National Assembly Elections 2019, the document detailing the distribution of ballot papers was available for consultation in the office of the senior presiding officer at each polling station. Moreover, Honorable David may recall that when he was a candidate for constituency number one, Grand River Northwest and Port Louis West for the 2019 National Assembly elections, he was, on nomination day, handed over a letter to candidate by the returning officer, wherein he was informed of inter alia. I quote, the number of ballot papers allocated to each voting room may be consulted in the office of the senior presiding officer at every polling station, unquote. This letter to candidate was handed over to all candidates for the 2019 National Assembly elections, and this has been the case for all elections. Mr. Speaker, sir, it must be highlighted that since the last village council elections in 2020, a copy of the distribution of ballot papers is now handed over to all candidates on nomination day. This measure was also applied for the Rodriguez Regional Assembly elections in 2022. Similarly, the same principle was adopted for the National Assembly by election in constituency number 10, Montaille Blanche and Grand River Southeast, scheduled to be held on 9th of October mm -hmm. this year. This measure will be applied for all future elections, including the forthcoming National Assembly elections. Mr. Speaker, sir, the Office of the Electoral Commissioner has also emphasized that no surplus, ordinary or tendered ballot papers are printed other than those indicated in the distribution of ballot papers. Uh, Honorable David, we have exceeded quite some time on this question. I will allow uh, two, supplementary, two supplementary questions from your side and one from the government side, provided that no more than five minutes is spent. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Selon les informations dont je dispose, pour les dernières élections nationales de 2019, Un total de bulletins de vote additionnel sur les 21 circonscriptions de 40 481 bulletins en surplus ont été imprimés. Et avec des pourcentages de surplus différents, disparates d'une circonscription à l'autre, allant de moins d'un pour cent dans certaines circonscriptions à un maximum de 8,5% pour la circonscription numéro 8. Puis-je demander au Premier ministre le raisonnement du bureau du commissaire électoral derrière l'impression d'un nombre de bulletins additionnels différents d'une circonscription à l'autre. Monsieur le Président, c'est ça le problème avec l'opposition. Ils sont toujours en denial mode. Ils pensent toujours que les élections ont été truquées. Alors qu'ils ont, qu ont, qu ont eu leur pétition devant la Cour, je ne vais pas mentionner combien, sept ont été retirés. Sept. Et parmi, il y avait des allégations telles que l'honorable membre vient de faire à l'Assemblée aujourd'hui. Et sept qui ont été retirés, ils n'ont même pas eu le courage 
d'aller déposer en cours pour venir prouver ce qu'ils sont en train de dire. Donc, Monsieur le Président, le, le, je ne sais pas comment on va faire comprendre à cette opposition qu'il ne doit pas être de mauvais perdants. Vous avez perdu les élections, acceptez, acceptez le verdict de la population et, et, et n'essayez pas de trouver... I can't hear the reply. I have some respect for the Prime Minister. Let him enter. Et n'essayez pas de trouver des prétextes euh, comme vient de le faire le, le, l'honorable membre qui vient dire qu'il ah, y a tant de, de... Il y a des discrepancies. Et, well, then why did you not substantiate this in court? Uh, you are saying that you have information. Can you table the information that you have to show that this, uh, there has been irregularity? Table, we'll see whether you are serious. You have not been able to prove before a court, and now you're coming before this uh, parliament because here, of course, you can say anything. Yes, Andre Bonabas, Mamad. Following the reply from the Prime Minister, can the Honorable Prime Minister state whether the subject matter of the question was mentioned in the electoral petition of the opposition in the aftermatch of the 2019? general election and whether there has been any ruling of our court thereon. Yes. Well, Mr. Speaker, sir, as the House is aware, 12 election petitions were lodged before our courts in the aftermath of the 2019 general elections. Seven were withdrawn, four were heard and dismissed with cost. And in the remaining case, there has been a recount and the results were maintained. Now, an election petition was lodged by one of the unsuccessful candidates of constituency number 10, Montaille Blanche and Grand River Southeast, namely your leader, Dr. Navin Chandra Rambulam, on 28th of November 2019, wherein several allegations were made on the conduct of those elections. And one of one of those allegations made by Dr. Angulam was that ballot papers were printed outside government printing office. He averred in his petition that he had, and I quote, just like the Honorable Member is saying, first-hand information, this is, I quote what he said, first-hand information to the effect that ballot papers were printed outside the government printing office premises at the premises of quad printing at Coromandel. This fact casts a cloud of corruption and deviousness on the election process as there is real likelihood that stuffing would have occurred nationwide, including constituency number 10, would have occurred nationwide, including his constituency, unquote. Now, when requested by way of a demand of particulars, by respondent number four, that is the electoral commissioner, on 13th of January 2022, to communicate documentary evidence showing that ballot papers were allegedly printed outside government printing office at the premises of quad printing at Coromandel. You know what Dr. Rangulam had answered? Before a court of law, I quote, no documentary evidence was available. No documentary evidence. The petitioner just made serious allegations and when asked to submit particulars, I must say he ran away. He ran away like a coward, la queue entre les jambes. He never came to proof of those arguments he made in his petition. Tout comme vous êtes retourné la queue entre les jambes aujourd'hui dans la chambre. Hein? So, order. 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 So, instead, order. Leader, so instead of show the example. No, no, order. Order. You should show the example. Right. He has the floor. Prime Minister, please. I correct. Like, okay, I correct. As I you said before, la vieille, vieille queue. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, in fact, in fact, Mr. Speaker, no, sir, the more time never you waste, came I, to prove. Sorry, okay, Prime Minister, I'm, let me interrupt you. The more time you waste. I was inclined to give a last question, 
but you're wasting time. So you decide if you want to. Honorable Prime Minister. So in, in, instead, instead of coming to the proof of those averments before a court of law, he withdrew his case purely and simply. Comme j'ai dit, Monsieur le Président, vile allegations were made by the opposition against the Electoral Commissioner, against the Electoral Commissioner's office, and the Electoral Supervisory Commission. Even civil servants who worked on the day of the elections were not spared. But finally, all the allegations have been proved to be false and malicious. I must say shame on them. And today, they are still trying to cast doubt on the election process. And the only explanation to that, as I say, is simple, because they know that the elections were conducted in such a way that it cannot, I'm, I, I wouldn't say it cannot, but I would say it was not rigged. And as comme des mauvais perdants, ils veulent pas accepter le verdict de la population. Right. Honorable David, very concisely. Your last question. Monsieur le Président, 60 secondes. Je n'ai fait aucune allégation et je n'ai parlé en aucune non, façon d'impression en non, dehors non, du gouvernement de l'Italie. Wait, wait. That you can take later on the point of personal explanation. Just answer your question concisely. Le Premier ministre l'a lui-même dit dans sa réponse initiale. L'impression se fait par livret de 100 ou de 25. Donc ne peut en aucune façon tallier avec le nombre d'électeurs dans chacune des 20 circonscriptions. Ce qui oblige la commission électorale d'imprimer un surplus de bulletins de vote. Je demande au Premier ministre, peut-il nous expliquer le raisonnement derrière le nombre d'impressions différentes dans chacune des 21 circonscriptions, ce qui a amené à plus de 40 000 bulletins de vote additionnels pour les dernières élections. Oui, Prime Minister, oui. Honorable Member, it's a shame that you uh, you repeated the question. Yeah, I replied it. Yeah. You will, you insist on this question. Okay. I'm not going, Mr. Speaker, sir, I'm not going to repeat what I've said before because, the, as you say, it's the same question. But let me add one thing. The Honourable Member does not realize one thing, that a voter peut ne pas avoir uh, voté uh, comme il l'a voulu et gâcher son bulletin de ce fait. Qu'est-ce qu'il fait? Il peut quand même uh, demander à ce qu'il puisse avoir un nouveau bulletin. Donc, il faut toujours avoir des bulletins ad additionnels. C'est pas ces bulletins. Je sais qu'est-ce qui se passe dans votre tête. Dans votre tête, c'est que vous croyez qu'on a imprimé, que le, pas nous, on a imprimé, on a fait imprimer, le, le Electoral Commission a fait imprimer les bulletins pour ensuite, sûrement que vous, peut-être vous êtes en train de préparer, euh, les prétextes pour la prochaine élection que, que vous allez certainement faire, que on va, on va donc ajouter ces bulletins dans les boîtes. Enfin, I, I, I hope, well, I, I, I hope that you are different from the other members, that you realize that this cannot be and will, will not, will never happen. It cannot happen. Right. Honorable members, before I make my announcements, uh, on two occasions, mobile phones have rang on both sides of the house. Let me remind honorable members that this is not in line with standing orders. Refrain from using your mobile phone on loud or watching videos in the chamber. Next time, I will take action. Honorable members, the table has been advised that the following PQs have been withdrawn. B621, B623, B625, B626, B628, and B629. In the other time, uh, we'll suspend the sitting for one and a half hours.